Great here, welcome to a quick round of World of Warships. It's been a while, and I'll just uh, say very quickly why that is. Um, I decided a little bit ago that I wanted to upgrade my machine to make recording a bit easier, and in the middle of uh, getting a new hard drive so I could I could record more videos at once, so I have more uh, a more stable stream of videos, uh, my headphone with my microphone died, so I wasn't able to make any at all. But Christmas came, and I got a new headset during it, so here we are. From what I uh, I heard in the quick test before I fired up this video, it sounds like the new microphone is great. Um, hopefully that's true for a longer test such as this. Anyway, so to commemorate the return, just a, a, a quick round in World of Warships. Um, it is in the Tier 4 German Destroyer, the V-170. This is the last of the the new German destroyers, which actually has the two forward-facing torpedo tubes. I love that design. It, it allows you to be a heck of a lot more aggressive in these things than you normally are. But it's actually surprising because uh, how far you have to give a lead. So it's almost like they're another set of uh, sideways-facing torpedo tubes um, when, you, when you're at uh, really close ranges. But still, you, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a fun ship. Um, I'm going to miss it. This, I think this is going to be the second to last round in this ship. The next round, I should have uh, enough to progress to the Tier 5. So we're on this map, which uh, I completely forget what it is. Everyone knows this map. Um, normally in this map... Uh, normally in World of Warships, what I do is whenever I am... Oh, here we are, the Clemson. I just wandered into detection range here. And I know I'm firing these way off of the track, but it's because I expect wild battle maneuvers as I start shooting at him. So I figure he might double back... Or he might slow down, drop smoke something, so clearly he's never going to get to the track. This torpedo was actually aimed right about where he was last. I doubt he's still going to be there, but you never know. People are noobs. And now I've got a Phoenix closing in on me, and the Clemson's firing on me. I dropped my smoke. I would say I dodged those shots, but... And now the standoff begins. Now the German destroyers, their smoke lasts a bit shorter, I believe it is, than the American and the Russian destroyers and the Japanese. So you have to kind of get used to not relying on your smoke as much as possible. And I think after I started playing my German destroyers, that has really helped out on my other destroyers. I don't drop smoke the instant I'm spotted anymore. I, I do do a bit more of a dodging. Speaking of dodging, time to engage the WA's D-hacks and make sure that I'm not touched by these torpedoes at all. Get in the middle. I uh, slow down there to, to let them pass, but they run out of steam. Way too hot in that middle area. So, a few parting shots while I disengage. And this Phoenix is going to get away, and that's kind of going to be annoying later on. As I was saying, in World of Warships, I uh, what I do is largely determined by my spawn and what the team is doing. So since I was, uh, there's our, our capture points are north and south, and there was an A, B, and C, the, the three points to scout. Uh, usually I'll head in the middle with destroyers because you, you want to break up the north and south as much as possible. And that's why I headed to the middle there. So here's a lone battleship, and this is where, I, if I were in my German, or I'm sorry, my Russian destroyers, I would say I'm pulling a crazy Ivan. But there's the two forward-facing tubes, and the whole time I'm just going to be shooting at them as I go in. One torpedo on the track, one slightly uh, aft, because I'm expecting him to slow and turn in. But there he eats those first two... There's three, there's four, and five, and yeah, that last one missed. 
or maybe it was the first one. He gets a big hit, but with the flooding, which I think, yeah, he repaired and he's got his uh, damage control, or did the damage control and now he has repair crews going. But with these quick uh, these uh, quick reloading launchers, here's two more forward-facing tubes. And I basically just have to make sure that I don't eat any more of his uh, primary turrets. So there's my first kill of the match, and we are now down uh, five ships to three that we've killed. So things are not looking up at all. Now here, I could have gone north, but I would have been trying to capture Solo against, uh, what is it, two, four, six, seven ships on the north side, while there's three down here along with three of my own. I consider going up there for a little bit because I would be coming up behind uh, all of them, but then our, uh, our Kohlberg dies, that other ship up there is going to die, and I realize I, it's just silly of me to go up there. So I might as well stick down here, help clear out the south, and uh, this will mean that the, the enemies have to come in, they have to trickle in one and two at a time unless they form up, which this is public, they're not going to form up. Oh, and this is the, the, the lull as we do the reposition after that, that kill on that Wyoming. So now we are down, what is it, seven ships to five. They still have basically a two-ship lead. Our Miyogi eats a few more torpedoes from that Wakataki. And the St. Louis has torpedoes after it, I'm not sure why. Fired from the other side of the Wakataki, maybe? And there goes our Miyogi, and the Kaiser up north is now dead. So we're now three ships against seven. Wonderful odds. First, we have to make sure that this Wakataki is removed from our side of the map. All those ships up north, they're going to take a couple minutes to get down here. It looks like we've got two St. Louis's left. One of them has already got two kills, so that's nice. And there's Mr. Wakataki. Since I was spotted, I figure he's going to be putting torpedoes around my expected track, so I'm, I'm just going to turn, not give him the opportunity. And then come around the other side and light them up with my guns. I do have my German destroyer set up for gun combat. There's my second kill. Instead of torpedo combat, uh, I think it's just a decision based off of the... Uh, yeah, there's his torpedo track, or his attempt, because he didn't shoot at me once. I knew they were coming. I've got it set up for guns, just for the entire line. I think the German line is more of a gunboat line than a torpedo line. Don't get me wrong, the torpedoes down at, at this level are fun with those two forward launchers. But I think most of the damage, yeah, I've got 67 shots uh, landed already with my guns. Uh, granted, most of my damage is probably from the torpedoes at this point. So, here is a two-thirds dead German destroyer, and the first two ships that we spot are cruisers, which love three ships. There's that phoenix that I didn't kill. Three ships uh, that love hunting cruisers. This is not good. Here I'm lining up for shots on the Kuma, and I figure if I place myself right, I'll get some torpedoes out on the Kuma, smoke up. And here I'm making sure that I'm not going to be uh, putting that St. Louis in danger. I figure it's a bit, a bit too early. But I'll smoke up, slow down, 
see if I can take out this phoenix. Unfortunately, I misjudge, and I'm the one that's spotting the phoenix. <laughs> so I put some more shots downrange, and then switch over to the kuma. Now that I know my say, uh, my St. Louis has turned around, and he turned because of those torpedoes, it's safe for me to launch at the Kuma. And just keep up the... I would say withering fire, but it's not very withering at this this tier. Not to compare to, to something like the... Uh, what am I currently on now? The Sims? Or the... Uh, is it the Fletcher that I'm on? There's kill number three on the Kuma. And see how the, the smoke is already dissipating. So now those two St. Louis's are engaging in the Kohlberg. I get a couple of shots down on him. And this lead. I mess up on the lead, but... Because I figure the Phoenix was behind that, that island. I gotta give him time to come out. And now the rest of the ships are, are taking pot shots at me. So it's time to get the Torps out. Angle against the Phoenix run away from the other ships so they have a very narrow profile to shoot at me. Let's see if I can finish off the Phoenix. I don't know why he's not firing at me. I really don't. There he goes. And there's kill number four. So while that was happening, the Colbert got one of the two St. Louis's, or maybe that come over there helped, and they took care of him. So now, from three versus seven, we're down to two versus three. I won't be able to smoke up again for another, looks like, two minutes. So, just speculative torpedoes. And I get in to, to help my St. Louis take down this Kuma as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, that's going to leave... What is that battleship back there? I think it was a Miyogi and a... their St. Louis, and I think both of them are on almost full health. This might have been a better time for a torpedo launch. But, yeah, because he's launching torpedoes at this point. Notice how he's not firing at all. My torpedoes are already back up. Yep, there are the torps. And a few more shots out. Oh, it wasn't a Miyoki. It's, uh... Ichizuki? I guess I could call him itchy and scratchy. I'm not sure. Somehow I dodged. There we go. Big hit from... I'm not sure if it was the St. Louis or the, uh, the itchy. And our St. Louis is down. But... Hello, Kuma. You are my Kraken Unleashed. There we go. So, 400... Uh, no, 124 health versus a full health St. Louis... Or nearly full health and a nearly full health uh, Ishizuki. This does not bode well. Definitely not. And there's the end of the match with the uh, the Kraken pulled out just at the last minute.